Hey, it's time to get up. Mornings are hectic for any family. Take a pull up out and go into the bathroom and change. Especially with six kids. <laughs> living full time inside an RV. I just think the whole thing is hard, man. I think, you know, I mean, look, look, look. I, my kids can't even have a normal breakfast. For several months, this Bellingham family of eight has been homeless. It's been hard. It's been difficult. I don't like seeing our kids go through it. Damon, no, no. Go that way. Parents, Cassandra and David, have their work cut out for them. Love you. The kids are ages 12 to 5 months. <laughs> Skylar is the oldest in middle school. Hi. Then there's Catherine. Hello. Chloe, I'm gonna show you. Daxton and Damon, can you smile? Hey. And Everly, yeah. Is the baby the only one born into homelessness? The RV doesn't have enough room <laughs> for these big personalities. There's a leak, but up here is dry. And it needs repairs, but it's shelter for now. Other people, they look at you and they think that you're on the very bottom of the totem pole because you're homeless. Homeless, a title that comes with a lot of stigma. And it's automatically assumed because you live in an RV that you're a drug addict. But I can tell you, me and my wife have never done a drug in our life. You see outside? They are the working homeless, rarely talked about. David has a full-time job as a tattoo artist. I'm doing a heck of a lot more than sitting on my butt just hoping for handouts. But it's still not enough. What's going on, everybody? Diamond Dave here, the owner of Atomic Frog Tattoo. Lo David once owned his own tattoo shop in Florida. We became the highest rated shop in Destin Beach in a matter of nine months. At that time, the family had a house. Skylar, the oldest, still remembers it. I had my own room and everybody else had their own room. It was good. It was great, but then everything happened so fast and now we're stuck in here. Problems began for the family during the pandemic. They moved to Georgia to care for David's sick mom. When she died, the family moved to Washington to be near friends, their only support network. With so much change and too little savings, the money ran out. We literally went from a high level of success to destitute and it feels like in a blink of an eye. So right now I'm just working really hard and trying to like climb back up to the top. Climbing back up isn't easy, nor is fighting the stigma. It is not true that working full time, even in some cases two parents working full time, can make enough money to meet all of the basic needs of a family. Sarah O'Connor runs Ferndale Community Services. So far we've served 200 families out of this little closet. A nonprofit helping low income and unhoused people in Whatcom County including David and Cassandra. We've always served low income families, but the vast majority have been housed. And I think now we're seeing more, more families that are living in cars. The short term outlook for these families can be grim. A one bedroom in Bellingham starts at about 1200 bucks. Rent the family says they can't afford. What you doing little dude? And most places won't consider leasing a one bedroom to a family of eight anyway. Daddy, give me my baby already. I don't have your baby. Making their 12 year olds dream seem like an impossible one. Me having my own room or me sharing it with my brothers instead of just sitting and living in here. You know, every single day I feel like a failure and, and I just keep telling myself that it's going to get better, it's going to get better, it's going to get better, it's going to get better. The family is on a wait list for housing help. There is a significant housing shortage in Whatcom County. Getting into more permanent housing on average can take five months. That means Skylar, Catherine, Chloe, and Daxton will start school without an address. We're probably not going to end up getting them school supplies or clothing. And it breaks my heart, but there's nothing I can do. Money is really tight. Hug. The start of school will give mom a break during the day, but for the kids, it can bring shame and unwanted attention. Last year, they came home crying a couple times because, you know, they were homeless. Like they didn't have anywhere to go, so they get picked on for that or they get picked on because, like I said, their, their clothes aren't what, you know, anybody else's clothes are. On these last days of summer, Hello guys, follow me! The kids are letting their imaginations run as wild as this overgrown field behind their RV. Do you see the bear? David and Cassandra say they'll be starting the school year doing the best they can with what they've got. People just judge you by what you're going through. They don't judge you 
by what you've accomplished and what you're trying to accomplish. They just see all the negative, not the positive. They don't see that I may be homeless, but I have six kids who are loved, Love you. who are cared for, who are fed, who are clothed. They don't see all that. They just see they're homeless. A few updates for you tonight. Since we first met them, the family has received help from Lydia Place. They now have temporary shelter in a motel room, but they are still waiting for a long term solution. There's also been some recent online fundraising for them. The family says they are extremely grateful to everyone who has donated. Text the word help to 206 448 4545. We will send you a link to this story with ways to help not only this family, also the many others that are in similar situations. Because I mean, that's really the point. This is one family, a large one, but they're not alone at all. They are not alone. Uh, this is a sobering fact. Uh, Whatcom County tells me right now their motel stay program can only support about 50 families at any given time. Right now, they have more than 200 eligible families on the wait list, and that is only in Whatcom County. Jeez. 200. Yeah. Wow. That they know of. Okay. Hopefully they will get there. Yes. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah.